Hello, this is John Purcell from QuantumLifetime.com and in this tutorial I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra to get to a different definition of energy which is functionally the same as the last one we saw just because I think this is going to come in handy in future and it'll help us get more of a handle on what energy is supposed to be exactly. So we saw in the last tutorial that if you let's say you measure some distance and let's call the distance S let's say and so here's a zero position and here's S which could be 15 meters or whatever you like and we'll have um, an object which we apply a constant force to and initially it's at rest here and by the time it gets here it's going to be going at a fair clip so we apply a force to it constant force so it undergoes a constant acceleration and it ends up here with a final speed of V and we looked at this in the last tutorial. Now we know from last time that the energy that this thing has um, when it reaches S after time T, let's say, the energy is going to be equal to the work done on it. And so this is all just definition really. And that's going to be equal to the force times the distance, which I've written the distance as S. So it's going to be equals Fs, and that's the definition of the energy, the kinetic energy that the particle will have by the time it's accelerated to this point and it's flying off in this direction. Now from Newton's second law we know that in modern units F is equal to ma, the force on something is equivalent to the mass of it times its acceleration and the bigger the mass, the bigger the force has to be to get that same acceleration. Or the bigger the force, the greater the, the greater the mass must be for a given acceleration to make everything work. Or you could say like the more force on it for a given mass, the faster it's going to accelerate. However you look at it, this equation is true. And it's kind of true in everyday life. There's nothing mysterious about that. So we can take this equation and use it to replace force here in this equation and we can say E equals M mass times acceleration times distance. Now what is this distance? Well the distance will be the average speed travelled times the time it was travelled for. So we can say that the distance equals average speed and the average speed if we start at zero when we finish at speed V average speed is going to be V over 2 half of the final speed. That's the average it did by definition of average if the acceleration was constant. So the distance it travels will be V over 2 times the time that it actually takes and that gives us here an equation that says energy equals mass times acceleration and replacing S with this we get V over 2 times T. And now finally the final speed here the final speed v has got to be the acceleration times the time, which follows from the definition of acceleration. If it's accelerating at, let's say, 5 meters per second per second, it starts off at zero, and after one second it's doing 5 meters a second, after two sec seconds, 10 meters per second, and so on. So the final speed is the acceleration times time, which means that the energy equals mass Oh, well, actually, let's go back to this, because rearranging this, acceleration equals the final speed divided by the time. So the energy equals mass times the final speed divided by time, using this to replace A, times V over 2 times T. And now the T's here cancel out, and what we get is energy equals one half of MV squared. And that's an, another definition of energy. If something's going with speed v and it has mass m, then we can work out the energy in joules. You could do this with your car if you measure its speed in meters per second and you know how heavy it is in kilograms. You could work out how many energy, how much energy it's got for a given speed in joules. And apparently this was tested back in around 1700 by a Dutch guy called Gravesand or Gravesander, something like that, who dropped weights into clay. And he noted for a given speed how big an impact these weights made in the clay. And he considered that to be a measure of their energy. And it was his work that led to the formulation of 
and the idea of energy itself in a modern sense. So that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, keep it real.